children that we were born on the 15th, 18th, 12th. To tell you the truth, fellas, I don't know the exact date. We always celebrated in the spring when I found you on my doorstep. The important thing is that we're all going to be together to celebrate your birthday. Whenever that is. Here goes. Oh, Great Spirit, tell us the date of our birthday. You pushed it. I can't help it if it knows our birthday, Simon. This is useless. We'll never find out when we were born. Oh, yes, we will. There's somebody out there who knows our birthday and a lot more about us. And who is this somebody? Our mother! Come on, we're going to find Mom! Mom? I wish we could say goodbye. He'd never let us go. Don't worry, the Chipettes will explain everything in the morning.
of things. Fortunately, no one was seriously hurt, although Papa Willy did sprain his foot pretty badly. <sighs> I thought we were so happy together. Believe me, Dave, the boys love you very much. Just because they're looking for their mama doesn't mean they don't love you. <sighs> I hope you're right. Hurry up, you guys. This way. That's not what the ranger said, Brittany. I have an impeccable sense of direction, Jeanette. Why you always doubt me, I'll... <coughs> Brittany! Is she okay? <coughs> Hang on, Brittany. Jeanette. Uh, Mom, about the nightshirts. A little snack? Oh, well, I guess I still think of you as babies.
Cleaning up my babies was the hardest thing I've ever done. I just felt I had no other choice. Don't cry, Mom! <laughs> we understand. Why didn't you come back for us? I knew you had a new life. I love you, boys. a bit vague, but, but we'll figure out which way to go. I bet it's this way, but then again, it could be this way. <laughs> well, at least we know it's not that way. You're sure? Have I ever been wrong? <sighs> Let's go, girls. Doesn't mean you don't love us. We can't expect 
you to live in the city. It would be like us trying to live in the forest. Our lives are completely different. Where have I heard that before? Oh, honey, that's so wise of you. It is, isn't it? They can point us in the right direction. Boys! Come on, girls, we can go now. The, the boys are fine. They, they found their mother. But they, don't you even want to talk to them? They look so happy, I don't think I should interfere. Good to see you guys. Mom, this is our dad, Dave. She knows that, Theodore. Oh, yeah. You've done a wonderful job with the boys. Well, these three are very special to me. I, I better be going. Can't we stay for the party? You mean you're coming home? But we'll be back for visits, okay, Mom? Promise. Promise.
Thank you, Doctor, for dropping by tonight. I wish I could tell you that Tommy's going to get well by Christmas, but I can't. To tell you the truth, I've tried everything possible. I know you have, Doctor. I just wish we knew what was wrong with him. Tommy's not even interested in his music anymore. His sister reads to him every night, hoping something would snap him out of it. Where were we, Tommy? Oh, I remember. The handsome prince was searching everywhere for the beautiful maiden. Theodore, Simon, Alvin. Yes, David, dear? I am fully aware that there are only five more days before Christmas and 370 days until next Christmas. It's a wonderful day. It's the greatest day of the year. And furthermore... can't just run in here and wake me up and... Wait a minute, you guys. Gee, that sounds pretty. Guys, it's only a little recording session. It worked. Maybe I'll even let you play your harmonica, Alvin. My harmonica. You see, Alvin. It's your responsibility to... Right, Dave. Responsibility. We'll share the responsibility. You go on and get the studio ready, and we'll go window shopping. Well, that sounds fair enough. Hey, don't be late. Dashing through the stores on a chipmunk skating board. Save everything we can just to see that Tommy makes it through Christmas. What does that mean, Mommy? Make it through Christmas. I still don't understand, Mommy. He won't make what through Christmas?
Ready, fellas? Ready whenever you are, Dave. Let's try it again. We've been good, but we Hold it, Alvin. Well? I'll tell you what, Dave. Let's take a break. Take a break? Gee, thanks, Dave. Alvin! <laughs> Tommy, you have a guest. It's probably another doctor. Well, no, I'm not a doctor. I'm a sort of delivery boy. Oh, hi, Alvin. What are you delivering? More medicine? No. You see, Tommy, they had this kind of prize contest down at the department store in the music department. And, uh... Somebody put your name in. And, well, anyway, Tommy, you won first prize. And here it is, the Golden Echo Harmonica. The Golden Echo Harmonica. Well, gotta go. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Mr. Seville, you're running out of studio time. Well, I guess we'll just have to record Alvin later. Ready, fellas? Okay, Dave. One, two, three, one, two, three. Christmas, Christmas time is near. Time for joy and time for cheer. We've been good, but we can't last. Hurry, Christmas, hurry fast. One. I'll get it. Hello? Oh, hi, Mr. Berkheimer. No, of course it's not too late to talk business. Oh, yes, I intend to follow through with your suggestion. Boy, Alvin, I can't First believe all, you gave your good. harmonica away. Me either. But I just knew it would make Tommy feel better. Did you tell Dave? I can't tell Dave. Dave gave me that harmonica. I'll have to save my money and get another one after Christmas. It's all set for Christmas Eve? That's great! It's Carnegie Hall. You guys are going to play there for a sold-out audience. Gee whiz! Fantastic! Oh, boy! You want Alvin to do a harmonica solo? Harmonica? But Alvin gave his harmonica... How about that, Alvin? Wonderful, Dave! Alvin's so excited about it, he can't wait. Yeah, now I can't wait until after Christmas to get that harmonica. I gotta make some money before Christmas. Fast! That's the neighbor's dog. Hey, I got a great idea. Now, here's what I want you guys to do. Go up to the attic, then get the neighbor's dog. Ah! <laughs> 
What's going on out there? What's all this? We're helping Alvin make money. Alvin! My name is not Alvin. It's Santa. All right, Santa. I'd like a word with you and your elves. I'm sorry. You'll have to wait in line like everybody else. Now, just a minute. And what's your name, little girl? Cindy Lou. What a nice cat you have, Cindy Lou. Cat? Oh, no! <laughs> Alvin! Yes, Dave? You want a word with us? I'd say it's about time we remember how lucky we all are and think about the real meaning of Christmas. You remember that poem I wrote a few years ago, The Spirit of Christmas? Oh, no, Dave. Not that again. Honest, Dave, we remember it very well. We still don't know what to do about Carnegie Hall. <clears throat> to get the Christmas spirit means... To give it money. We've got to make more money. You don't make a Christmas list. You get it. Maybe somebody will give you some money. It's what you give to others, your sisters and your brothers, and especially... To those you never met. I've never met anybody that would give me money. Yes, Christmas, Christmas, Christmas time. A giving, giving, giving time. So let's all give a cheer for... Money! Money? And just what is this talk about money? Well, you, you see, Dave, Alvin's just got to get some money. I see. And just what does Alvin need money for? Uh, for an operation. Well, actually, Dave, Alvin wants to buy a present. Well, that's different. And who is this present for? It's for himself. For himself? So that's what the spirit of Christmas means to you, Alvin? Buying presents for yourself? But... You better go on up to your room and think about the meaning of Christmas. It means a lot more than making money or buying yourself presents. But, Dave... No buts about it. Get in your room. You should have stuck with my line about the operation. Maybe you should have told him about Tommy. Dave, can I talk to you a minute? There's nothing more to say, Alvin. Are you still mad at me, Dave? No, I'm just very disappointed. Good night. How can you play a harmonica at Carnegie Hall if you don't have a harmonica? So I gotta have money! Money! Alvin, I'm very disappointed in you. Very disappointed. You've lost the spirit of Christmas. But, Dave, you don't understand. Did someone knock? Is this the loan department? Loan department? Where? Where? Oh, there you are. So you're the loan department? No, I was hoping you were the loan department, because I... Need a loan. Well, of course you're alone. There's nobody with you. There's so little time and so much to do. Like filling that empty little heart of yours with the spirit of Christmas. But I haven't lost the Christmas spirit. I... Well, of course you haven't. I haven't finished inventing it yet. Not the wheel, not the wild west, not even the baby was as difficult to invent as the spirit of Christmas. But... I have begun with Santa Claus. That's Santa for Santa and Claus for Claus. Santa Claus. A kind man with a beard and a hat. One look at Santa and you'll be overflowing with Christmas spirit. Voila! That's Santa Claus? 
If that isn't Santa Claus, I'll eat that cute, chubby little reindeer over there. <laughs> There's nothing quite like the exhilaration of discovery. So far, perfect! You don't understand. I haven't lost the Christmas spirit. I need money to buy an echo harmonica. Money? What is money? You buy things with it, like harmonicas. It sounds like a wonderful invention. Yes, I will have to invent money. It will go perfectly with my last invention, the I.O.U. <laughs> That's na for na and ani for ani. Money. Not bunny, money. I need money, money, money. Maybe I was a little hard on Alvin. I think I'll tell him that I... I give up. Before you go to the store to buy the harmonica, I'd like to donate this to the cause. A cookie? A cookie? Oh, I forgot. I used up my allowance buying cookies. <laughs> Here's the money I was saving for a new book. Gee, thanks, fellas. Good, Good luck, Alvin. Alvin. Okay, fellas, let's get ready for Carnegie Hall. Where's Alvin? Uh, he's not here right now. That's perfect. Two hours before the Christmas Eve concert and... Hello? No, Alvin's not here, Mrs. Waterford. Alvin's harmonica? It worked wonders for Tommy? That's a miracle! Excuse me a minute, Mrs. Waterford. Well, it's about time you guys told me the whole story. Gee, I sure wish I had enough money to buy that harmonica. Pardon me, young man, but I need help. Me? You need my help? I knew it. I just knew that you would understand. But how can I... I thought so. I said to myself, now, there's a young man who wouldn't mind if a lonely old lady, who is very, very far away from home, bought him a Christmas present. A Christmas present? A harmonica. How would you like an echo harmonica? An echo harmonica? But you don't even know me. No fair changing your mind now. You just wait here and I'll be right back. It can't be. I don't believe it. Yes, young man. One golden echo harmonica. I must be dreaming again. Here you are. I wrapped it myself. Oh, thank you. No thanks. Now I won't have it. But, um, maybe you'll play something for me. And I owe you an apology. That was a wonderful thing you did for Tommy. That's okay. Where'd she go? Where did who go? I didn't see any. That nice lady who gave me the harmonica for Christmas. She just disappeared. Dave, we better get going. We don't want to be late for Carnegie Hall. And we have a surprise for you when we get there, Alvin.
great. This is the surprise I was telling you about, Alvin. You mean that Tommy is all better? He sure is. We all wanted to surprise you. Tommy, got your echo harmonica with you? Sure do. Well, come on. We've got some celebrating to do. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet a very special friend of mine. He's come a long way to help us celebrate the best Christmas Eve ever. Just fine, sweetheart, just fine. You know, you really ought to get out some Christmas and see how the rest of the world lives. Oh, I don't know. Making children happy is your job. I guess I'm just an old homebody.
that policeman album, not teachers. Start working on Dave's present. And I'm going to make a list of everything I want for Christmas. They look nice, don't they, Ebenezer? I've been thinking. Maybe I'd call them Buster and Bob. Huh? <laughs> You're right, Ebenezer. Giving them names, it'd be mighty silly. Guess I was just trying to make it seem a little less lonely around here. And I have to tell Simon and Theodore what I want for Christmas. And Miss Miller and Brittany and... Hey! Watch where you're going! What a grouch! Doesn't that old guy know anything about Christmas spirit? Speaking of old guys... I'd better send a copy of my Christmas list to Uncle Fred. Uncle Fred? Uh, what are you going to get, Dave? The perfect gift. A picture of me. <sighs> Why am I not surprised? An automatic sock sorter. Dave's gonna love it. <laughs> Simon, have you seen Alvin? Nope. Uh, sorry, Dave. I haven't seen him. Simon, what are you doing in there? Nothing! Theodore! Uh, you can't! Come in, Dave! Uh, have you seen Alvin? What you baking? Nothing. It doesn't smell like nothing. Oh, believe me, it's nothing. <laughs> it's such a Christmas present. And then I want a Mighty Might race car set. The one on page 12 of the Acme toy catalog. And then I want... Alvin! Whoa! Christmas gets a little more dangerous around here. And a bunch of new video games, and... Alvin, what is this? My Christmas list. And states, and... Alvin, you're late for your paper route. Dave, I can't leave now. I'm only halfway through my list. Alvin? Okay, I'll ask Simon to do it for me. Alvin, it's your paper route. You do it. People are waiting for their papers. But what about me and what I need? Alvin! Okay, okay, but I'll have to hurry. If I don't finish my list and get it in the mail by five, Grandma and Grandpa won't have it in time to go shopping for my presents. My paper! Hmm. There, good as new. Nope. I want a dry one. Come on, be a sport. That's my last one. Have that paper here by sundown, or I'm going straight to your father. Oh no, look what time it is. Sold out. Got it! Oh no! It's too late to mail my Christmas list to Grandma and Grandpa! Grandpa and Grandma Seville. Two of my 
my major suppliers. Suppliers? Of Christmas presents. Now I'm going to miss out on some really great gifts. And it's all Mr. Carroll's fault. Alvin, there's more to Christmas than just getting presents. The holidays are a time of sharing, of giving to others. A time for sharing good food. And good company. Right. Maybe singing some Christmas carols would cheer you up, Alvin. But thanks anyway, Theodore. I think I'll just go upstairs and lie in the dark. Maybe I could call Grandma and Grandpa and give them my list over the phone. Tomorrow's Christmas Eve. They still have time to... <gasps> Christmas Eve! My essay on the true meaning of Christmas is due tomorrow. The true meaning of Christmas is... is... My mind's are blank. Maybe I'll write about what the true meaning of Christmas isn't. My neighbor, Mr. Carroll, doesn't have a clue about the true meaning of Christmas. Hey, what's going on? I'm the spirit of Christmas past. Dave? And I thought I was having a rough night. I've come to show you Christmas as it should be. I knew it wasn't for a fashion show. Alvin! You got the wrong guy. Mr. Carroll's the one who doesn't know what Christmas is about. It's time for us to begin our journey. Look, I'm busy right now, okay? Alvin! Look down there. Do you recognize that house? Of course I do. This is the house we lived in when we were little. <laughs> I remember that Christmas. We were so poor, we couldn't afford to get you really great presents. Alvin, that's not true. They were wonderful presents. Look. An eraser, and a pencil, and a piece of paper. These are great. Thanks, fellas. We wanted them to be nicer, Dave. But they're all we could afford. I hope you can use them. I'm going to use them right now. No. No. There! That's it!
Merry Christmas. That was the night I wrote the Christmas song. It was inspired by the gifts you boys gave me. But they weren't expensive or fancy. No, but they came right from your hearts. Well, our time here is up. But I don't want to go. They're having so much fun. It's time for the spirit of Christmas present to pay you a visit. Christmas present? As in gift? No. Christmas present, as in the here and now. Oh, big deal. Hey, what the? Ho, ho, ho! You brought my Christmas present? Christmas, boys. Christmas! Yahoo! Alvin, have you delivered your papers yet? In a minute, Dave. I just want to see how many of these are for me. This one, and this one, and here's another one, and here's one, and this one. Take the holes with bows of holly, fa la 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 la. And another one, and another one. All for me, 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 me. Wow, look at all those presents. I'm going to go help me open them. No, no, no. That's against the rules. You can't do that. Hey, what's this? It's that old grouch, Mr. Carroll. There you go, Ebenezer. You're right in the spirit of things. Now... Close your eyes. I've got a surprise for you. It's time for you to open your present. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> Don't worry about me, Ebenezer. My present should be waiting for me on the front porch by now. I don't know what I'd do without that newspaper. It's like having a whole bunch of visitors every single day telling me all about their troubles and their joys. The games they've won and the fights they've lost. Yes, sir. That old paper's come to mean the world to me. Oh. Well, I guess it only stands to reason. It's Christmas. I expect Alvin's I'm busy with more important things. So that's why Mr. Carroll's so fussy about getting his paper. I never thought about a newspaper being somebody's whole world. You and the paper are about the only visitors he ever gets. Gee, I'm starting to see what they've meant about the importance of giving. Me, 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 me. Here, I don't want to talk about Christmas anymore. Sorry, but you must still be visited by one more spirit. Ta-da! I am the spirit of Christmas yet to come. I'm here to show you visions of your future. Uh, thanks anyway, but I'm busy. I have an essay to write. And if I don't get it finished, I'm going to flunk English. You've been talking about yourself for hours. You must be exhausted. Allow me to talk about you for a while. To show you the you you may soon become. Fa la 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 I did it. I got all my Christmas shopping done. Alvin, are you all right? I'm exhausted. It's a jungle out there. Here, have some eggnog, Alvin. I, I made it just for you. As, as a Christmas present. Gee, thanks. I hope 
you don't mind uh, that I didn't get you a present. But everything I saw was something I wanted. Oh, that's okay, Alvin. The thing I'm looking forward to most is having Christmas dinner with the family. Christmas dinner? How's that coming along? It's all done. We'll eat as soon as Dave and Simon get back from the airport with Grandma and Grandpa Seville. You did a great job, Theodore. You made all my favorites. <laughs> not a pretty picture, is it? Well, it's not like I ate everything. I left a whole bowl of Brussels sprouts. Big deal, Alvin. You hate Brussels sprouts. Okay, okay. So what? This is so what? Theodore! Alvin! Grandma and Grandpa are here! Yeehaw! Grandma! Grandpa! What did you get me? Whoa! Alvin. We knew you'd want it that way. Merry Christmas, Alvin. Yeah, right, Grandma. Wait a minute. When did the doctor say you and Grandpa would be okay? In about three or four months, I think. Doc said we should be good as new by the end of April. Excellent! Expect my list for next Christmas, May 1st. That way, the minute you're well, you can start shopping for me! Whoa! Me! 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 Is that true? <laughs> Is that how I'm really going to end up? You got it! I'm doomed! As long as you only think of Christmas as a time to get. I'll change, I promise! From now on, I'll think of Christmas as a time to give! I'll change, I'll change! I promise, I'll change! <sighs> it's the morning already! That means it's Christmas Eve! I've got to finish my essay! The True Meaning of Christmas by Alvin Seville Last night, I discovered the truth about Christmas. I verified it with a weather service. It's never snowed here before. It's a Christmas miracle! In case you get hungry later. You know, fellas, I've got a feeling this is going to be a very special Christmas. What are you doing, Alvin? I have to turn in my essay, do some Christmas shopping, and spread joy and happiness to others. Alvin's going to spread joy and happiness?
I can't believe Dave's car stalled right in front of our school yesterday. It was humiliating. Well, I'd rather crawl to school. Shh, it's Dave. <laughs> Come on, guys, let's go. How's the song, Dave? Well, it's finally finished, and I've sent everything over to Cy. Now, let's hurry up, or you'll be late for school. Uh, I'll get the car. <coughs> oh, I'm too sick for school, Dave. Oh. Oh, <coughs> why, oh. I'm burning up with fever. Darn, I guess I won't be able to go to school today. Yeah, I don't want to go in Dave's car either. <coughs> It's too late, Alvin. You wouldn't get there on time. Oh. Come on, fellas. Help me push. Oh. <laughs> Natalie. She'll see me. Hi, Theodore. Have you seen a Alvin? Oh, <laughs> hi, Natalie. I can't talk now. I'm just uh, having my morning workout. Pushing cars is the latest craze. <laughs> really pumps up the old muscles. I got the big soccer game tomorrow, you know. Everybody in. Uh, see you later. can't wait for the big game! Even though we have to drive in Dave's car. Come on, you guys! What are we gonna do? Beat him! Beat him! Beat him! Huh? Where's our secret weapon? Dave! Really? They didn't like any of my songs? Well, I'm just going through a little dry spell. Uh, yeah. Okay. What's our mission, Dave? Dave? Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, beat him. Beat him. You don't sound too sure about that, Dave. Uh, have you seen my soccer shoes? You're wearing them. Ouch! <laughs> I guess I'm a little nervous. Uh, I've never played soccer before. Nothing to it, Dave. Just use your head. And your feet. We'd better get going. We don't want to be late for our victory. Yeah! We're gonna beat him! Uh, go and load the car up, fellas. I'll be right there. Uh, oh, hi, Ralphie. How much? Uh, but the whole car isn't even worth that. Uh, I just can't afford to bring it in right now. Uh, maybe next month. Uh, thanks anyway, Ralphie. Dave! Uh, coming! Uh, beat him! Uh, beat him! The score is tied 2-2 two two with 30 seconds left to play. What a cliffhanger! Speedy Seville steals it! He passes it to Chubby Seville, who bounces it to Brainy Seville. Over to Big Seville! Go, Dave! You got it! He's heading for the goal! He may score! Go, Dave! Go! Oh! Oh, my! Armstrong steals the ball! Thanks, son. Uh, are you okay, Dave? Yeah, sure. Just a little embarrassed. A little embarrassed? I'm humiliated. Uh, I didn't even see what happened. Uh, count your blessings, Dave. Timmy's dad scored the winning goal. Oh, I guess I kind of blew it, huh? Don't worry about it, Dave. It's only a game. Yeah, Timmy will only be bragging about how his dad won the game for the next 50 years. But we'll get over it. Someday. Hey, come on. I'll treat you all to a fruit smoothie. Good game, Dave. You almost had us there. Yeah, uh, almost. Well, hopefully your business is going better than your soccer game. Well, actually... Yeah, we're in a real boom right now ourselves, Dave. I'm making more money than I can spend. Well, uh... You too, huh? 
Hey, glad to hear it. Ugh. Wow! Look at that car! It's a Lamborghini X12. The finest roadster ever built. <laughs> yeah, and it's all ours. Isn't it great, Dave? Yeah, it's it, it's beautiful. Well, we better get going, fellas. We don't want to keep those fruit smoothies waiting. Oh. So long. What a beautiful car. Oh. I hope no one sees us. This is incredibly embarrassing. Hey, Seville, you need some help? No, no. It's probably just upset because it didn't get to play in the game. It doesn't know how lucky it was. I'll be happy to take the boys home for you, Dave. Hooray! Uh, but, fellas, what about our fruit smoothies? That's okay, Dave. <laughs> Oh, brother. What a great day. Dave, you're back! Timmy's car is like driving on air! And guess what? Mr. Armstrong said he could drive us to Camp Happy Trails! Oh, well, that's nice, but... It's okay, Dave. You can drive us if you want. We don't mind. It's not that, Simon. It's... Which reminds me, Dave. Did you send in the papers? We want to make sure Camp Happy Trails knows we're coming. Well, I... I can't wait to go! The Happy Trails chuck wagon is practically world famous! Oh, wait a minute, fellas. I don't know how to say this, but... I'm afraid I can't afford to send you this year. Are you kidding? But, Dave, we've been waiting for Camp Happy Trails all year. And we did all those extra chores! I know, but I expected at least one of my songs to be accepted. This isn't happening to me. I'm really sorry, fellas. I don't believe it. It's okay, Dave. We understand. There's always next year, right, Alvin? But you promised! Alvin! What? My whole summer is ruined! Probably my whole life! <laughs> the chuck wagon isn't that great! We understand, Dave. Really, we do. No Camp Happy Trails this year. I still can't believe it. Alvin, no one feels worse about this than Dave. Wanna bet? He didn't know that those songs wouldn't sell. He's just in a slump. What if he doesn't come out of it? We'll have to sell the house. Maybe we could live at Timmy's. He's got lots of room. Dave's too proud for that. He wasn't too proud at the soccer game. Alvin, come on. This is the worst day of my life. <sighs> I embarrass them, I ruin their summer, I, I can't write a hit song, I, I can't even afford to get my car fixed. Maybe they'd be better off without me. You're entering another dimension. Huh? One of sight, sound, and of mind. So, you think we'd be better off if you never existed? Uh, Simon? Sort of. Dave, this is making me dizzy. Dave, can you adjust this thing? <laughs> hey, that tickles! <clears throat> Seriously, Dave, we need to talk about you never existing. Let's see if I would have been better off without you. Submitted for your approval. The No Dave Zone. <laughs> Let's travel back in time to an important moment in my formative youth. Remember the big school spelling bee a few years ago? Sure. And I was so nervous I couldn't spell anything right? Spell principal, as in the head of a school. Principal. P-R-I-N-C-I-P-L-E. No, that's the other type of principal. Just remember this little trick. The principal at school is your pal. P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L. Great. Principal. P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L. 
You look awfully tired, Simon. Are you sure you want to keep going? Absolutely. The spelling bee's tomorrow. Uh, give me another one. All right. Spell Mississippi. Mississippi. M I S I P. I never get that one right. Here's a little rhyme that used to help me out. M I double S I double S I double P I. M I double S I double S I double P I. You've got it. M I double S I double S I double P I. M I double S I double S I double P I. After your help, Dave, I felt ready for that spelling bee. All right, number nine. For your last word, please spell the word guide. Uh, a guide. G I D E. Guide. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Number ten. For your last word, please spell the word Mississippi. <clears throat> Mississippi. M I double S I double S I double P I. Mississippi. Correct. Yay! Number ten, Simon Seville. Yay, Simon! You see, everyone treated me like I was smart, so I believed I was smart. Uh, but you were, uh, are. Well, it never happened that way. Uh, what do you mean? You weren't there to help me learn, to give me confidence. I was on my own, and not doing well. Mississippi. M I S A S I P I. Wrong. I haven't gotten one word all night. I'm just not smart enough. When the spelling bee came around, I was a nervous wreck. All right, number nine. For your last word, please spell the word guide. G I D E. Guide. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Number ten. For your last word, please spell the word Mississippi. Oh. <clears throat> Mississippi. M I S A S I P I. Mississippi. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. I was humiliated. I lost all self-confidence that day. <laughs> Boy, is he dumb! By the age of forty, I was still in kindergarten. But I don't get it. You were always so smart. Not without your help. Hey, where are you going? Back to school. I never did learn how to spell Mississippi. Hey, Dave. Theodore? Ah, uh, sort of. So, you think I'd be better off if you never existed, huh? Well, I... Come on. Did you say that or didn't you? Yeah, I guess I did, but... Well, let's take a peek. Hey, I I'm floating. Remember the time I ran for kindergarten president and, and nobody voted for me? Sure I do. I felt so alone. I, I didn't know what to do. Oh. Theodore, what's wrong? Nothing. I know something's wrong, Theodore. You didn't eat your dinner. Well, that doesn't mean nobody likes you. What did you do to get the nomination? Nomination. Nothing. Did you talk to anyone? No. Why not? Uh, I'm too shy. What if they don't like me? You're a very likable person, Theodore. But if you don't introduce yourself, people won't know just how nice you are. You think so? Absolutely. But remember, you have to go out and meet people and talk to them. Give them a chance to get to know you. I'll do it! I'll go right out and meet and talk to a bunch of people and make friends. That's the spirit. Uh, but first, I think I'll eat breakfast. 
dinner. Because of you, Dave, I learned I had to earn friendship. And with you believing in me, I believed in me too. Pretty soon, I had friends all around the world. I'd like to introduce the person voted most popular, Theodore Seville. Too bad it never happened that way, Dave. What do you mean? Did you forget already? You thought we'd be better off if you never existed. Without you to give me such great advice and encouragement, I moved to a desert island and became a hermit. You what? I never learned how to get along with people. They didn't like me, and I didn't like them. No, it can't be. I'm afraid it is, Dave. Oh. Theodore, Simon, what's happening? What a nightmare. You're not dreaming, Dave. Alvin? So, you think we'd have been better off if you never existed? Well, I... Come with me. Dave, how can I show you the effects of your wish if you won't cooperate? Hey! All right, Dave. Have it your way. Alvin! Now then, remember that lemonade stand I had when I was a kid? Alvin, this is not funny. That was a big turning point in my life, Dave. Remember what happened? Hey, how's business, Alvin? Not very good, Dave. Nobody wants to buy my lemonade. But you've only got one glass left. I only made one glass. If I made ten glasses and nobody bought them, I'd have to drink them all myself. You need a positive attitude to succeed, Alvin. But nobody even bought this glass. Come over here. Tell me what you see. A lemonade stand. How do you know it's a lemonade stand? There's no sign. If you want to sell lots of lemonade, you have to advertise. Right. I'll call it the Lemonade Stand of the Stars. Hey, that's pretty catchy. Come on, I'll help you make the sign. And I'll make some more lemonade. Get your ice-cold lemonade at the Lemonade Stand of the Stars. Here you go. Take a number. No need to push. Plenty for everyone. The Lemonade Stand of the Stars. Everybody loved it. But that's not the way it happened, Dave. Without you there to help me, my lemonade stand was a failure. And without that first success, I thought I was a failure. And that's exactly what I became. Sabelle! Did you finish that filing I gave you? Uh, yes, sir. I, I did. Then how come I couldn't find my sales report? Well, I... You filed it wrong. Here! Yes, I, I must have filed them wrong. I, I'm just no good, sir. Get with it, Seville, or find yourself another job. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, whatever you say, sir. Alvin, that's not like you. Without your help, Dave, I never learned that I could be a success. So there I am. No confidence, no opinion, no future. Just because I wasn't there? I was at the crossroads of life, Dave. And without you, I took a wrong turn. <laughs> and you thought that chipmunks would be better off if you never existed. Never existed. Never existed. Never existed. Never existed. A am I... I do exist. The boys. Simon, Theodore, Alvin, you're all right. Uh-huh. What's going on, Dave? Uh, I just wanted to see if you guys were okay. Yeah, Dave. We're fine. Fellas, I'm sorry for losing the soccer game and embarrassing you and wrecking your summer. We don't care about those things, Dave. Not more than we care about you. Yeah, you're the best dad in the whole world. I'm the richest man in the world. Hey, that gives me an idea for a new song. A really great new song. A really great new song? I haven't seen Dave this excited about a new song in a long time. Camp Happy Trails, here we come! Come on!
I love you boys too. This singing invitation is a great idea, fellas. Here's another one, Simon. Look at Theodore. Oh, I sure hope all our relatives can come next week. But of course they will, my good man. Gee, Alvin, I've never seen you this excited about seeing your relatives before. Well, as one gets older, Dave, one craves a sense of community. Of union, in short, of family. And the fact that he expects to land the lead in the community play and wants to show off. Yeah, it's called Pilgrims, Adventures in a New Land. They're going to broadcast the entire production live. Yours truly will be the toast of the town. What about you, Simon? Oh, no, Dave. I'm no actor. I'm a behind-the-scenes man. Given my technical expertise, I would expect to be chosen light and sound master. Too tough. I want to do the costumes. Hey, guys, come on. We've got to get over to the playhouse and request our assignments. Here you go. Uh -huh. See you later, Dave. Oh, and Dave, make sure you mail those invitations out pronto. Yeah, we don't want anyone to miss it. Like I got a birdie. Okay, keep your head down. Oh, sorry, Mr. Ferguson. Hey, uh, do you think everything will be ready for the family get-together? Not unless you give up golf. I hate this game. That's it. Dave! Dave! Oh, uh, uh, hi, fellas. Dave, where are those invitations? Easy, Alvin. I sent them out four days ago, just like you asked. Oh, no! As a matter of fact, Grandma Henny's arriving tomorrow. Boys? Uh, fellas, are you okay? I mean, I know Grandma Henny can be tough, but uh, underneath she's... It's not Grandma Henny. It's our casting assignments. Ms. Carey says we should celebrate the pilgrim spirit of adventure by trying something new. She's evil, Dave. She cast me as the lead. I haven't acted on stage since I was humiliated in The Merchant of Venice. Simon, you were three years old. I think I'm gonna be sick. What about me? I don't know anything about lighting. I I'm just not maniacally inclined. That's mechanically inclined, Theodore. Miserable day of our lives. <sighs> <sighs> 
<laughs> Listen, if you guys don't take risks and tackle what you're afraid of, you'll never grow as people. Dave, if I were interested in personal growth, I'd wear high heels. <laughs> Did I ever tell you guys one of my most embarrassing moments? I was on this amateur show, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Please welcome the singing cowboy, Little Davy Seville. Oh, give me a hope where the cantaloupe rope and the, and the beer is not cloudy all day. Since I couldn't remember the words, I made up my own. That's when I decided to become a songwriter. What are you saying? I'm going to grow up to be a seamstress? All I'm saying is, taking chances is what life's all about. Remember, the well-beaten path rarely leads to discovery. Hmm. Oh yeah? Well, you won't drive into quicksand if you stay on the main road. going on? Welcome to the world of Risk Takers! Try again. What is life without new hopes? Be bold, Simon. Project new dreams where one has the freedom to attempt the unknown. I'm gonna bomb. A little more De Niro and a Less, Ethel Merman. Dave? Get that light out of my eyes. <laughs> Sorry. Where's my room? <laughs> Down the hall. Good night, Grandma. Good night. Hey, Alvin, that's a fantastic Indian costume. It's supposed to be a turkey. Look, I love you guys no matter what you do. But fear shouldn't keep you from challenging yourselves. Pleasant dreams, fellas. Huh, fat chance. This is just too much. I think I'm losing my hair. Will you guys keep it down? I've got worries of my own. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> This would happen. You're gonna make fools out of all of us and on live TV. I've got relatives in the audience. You shouldn't try new things. You can only fail. Shakespeare. 
Cheer for Tots performance was a Hall of Fame blunder. But now, in Pilgrim's Adventures in a New Land, he's added new meaning to the word <laughs> humiliation. Let's take a look. Um, what is life without new hopes, new dreams, where one has the freedom to attempt the unknown? Thy words are truly poetic and worth fighting for. Uh, what is life without new hopes, new dreams, where one has the freedom to attempt the unknown? The undisputed Ship of Fools grand prize winner goes to Simon Savell. We have dared to forsake much for the promise of a new land. ups and downs, but as long as you get back up, you're never a failure. Excellent, Dave. Another truly inspiring bit of advice. Well, listen, I've got to go to the airport and pick up the rest of the relatives. We'll all see you at the play tonight. Break a leg. What kind of a thing is that to say to your kids? It's a tradition in the theater, Theodore. It means good luck. Well, I don't feel lucky. Fear not, boys. I've got a foolproof plan. Forget it, Alvin. Yes, everyone is ready for the event of the year. Pilgrims, Adventures in a New Land, starring Simon All Savin. right. What's your plan? It's great. We get to miss the play and be heroes. Now, here's what we do. I get some cards. Everybody ready? Ready. <sighs> ready. Here goes. Mama! That's your cue. Oh, my goodness. 
There's a baby in the gorilla cage. I'd better find its mother, even though I'm supposed to be starring in the community play tonight. What? Alvin, this costume is ridiculous. Simon, just get your girdle on. Oh, help me! Uh, my baby! <laughs> Pretty fantastic what you boys did back there. <laughs> well, it's nothing your average risk-taking adventurer wouldn't have done. Say, aren't you boys in the big play tonight? Yes, but it was a sacrifice we felt we had to make. And no one can blame us for that, right? All our relatives were coming, too. They'll be so disappointed. But it's too late now. The play starts in less than five minutes, and it's at least 20 minutes away. Yeah, we practically need a, a police escort. Oops. Hop in, boys. I'll get you there. I wonder what's keeping the boys. Probably just a little stage fright. Like a certain cowboy I once knew. Oh, another ten seconds and it would have been too late. This is your lucky day, boys. Oh, yeah. Prices, everyone! <laughs> I feel like a guy on death row. <gasps> I saw you boys at the zoo. It wasn't us! Well, too bad. Because I saw three chipmunks put on one of the best performances these eyes have ever seen. The acting, the costumes. What about the, the lighting? It 
Inspirational! Why, those three could have done anything! They could have? Absolutely. Well, too bad it wasn't you three. Oh! Five seconds to curtain! She really thinks we can do it! And she's a tough nut! Break a bone! boys were fantastic. Were they fantastic? Hey, I'm speaking! Fantastic! Fantastic! fantastic. Here's to family, whose confidence and support makes risk-taking a lot easier. Speaking of risk-taking, Dave, we've got a great surprise for you. We've entered you in a celebrity golf tournament. What? But I, I don't know what I'm doing. And neither did we. And you've got all night to practice. That's not enough time. Besides, my golf clubs are in terrible shape. Not to worry, Dave. See? We've welded them back together. Oh, I can't do this. Now, now, Dave. Taking chances is what life's all about. Just do your best, David. Tell me this is just going to be seen by a few people. Nope. Televised. Coast to coast. Remember, Dave, if you never take risks, you'll never grow as a person. Oh. The well-beaten path rarely leads to discovery. Where'd all these people come from? Yeah,